Psalms 34 and 8 says, oh, look at your neighbor and say, oh. oh. It worked that way. It was, oh. oh. Somebody's thinking now, oh. oh. So, oh, was more than the 15th letter of the alphabet in that scripture. Come on, somebody. It was an expression of his excitement, his expectation, his enthusiasm. David said, oh, oh. taste the Lord. Yes. See that he is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. In that Psalms 34 and verses 8. Somebody say, taste the Lord. Taste the Lord. Look at somebody beside you. you got to turn your neck to do it and tell them, say, there's more than one flavor. I'm telling you, Jesus says to his presence, he has more flavors than Sonic does. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I'm telling you what, what, what I mean by that. Whatever you've tasted of him, and that word taste can really mean to experience. Whatever experience you've had in him, there's always a fresh taste. There's always another. You can't master the master. You can never come to the end of him who has no end. Isaiah 57 and 15 said he inhabits eternity. Somebody shout, God's habitation is forever. Hallelujah. He declares the end from the beginning. Isaiah 26 and verses 10 declares. Revelation 22 and 13, he said, I'm Alpha Omega, beginning and end, first and last. Hallelujah. In other words, he says, before here was here, I was here. I'm responsible for here being here. God stepped out into nowhere and gave, come on here, an address just with his spoken word. That's how big he is. That simply means God ain't in the earth, the earth's in him. God ain't even in the universe. The universe is in Him. God's not in time. Time's in God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, He's too big to master. You can't come to the end of Him who has no end. So that simply means there's always more of God. Always. Always more of Him. So when David said, Oh, taste the Lord and see that He is good. Amen. He was trying to let that, amen, come across to those that was hearing. Man, he was saying, there's more to God than you've ever experienced. Amen. amen. Praise God. And see, the biggest enemy of seeing God move is having been satisfied with having seen God move. Right. And what I mean by that, I call it the enemy of enough. Say the enemy of enough. Yeah. The enemy of enough says, well, I've experienced God and, uh, and then you just camp out there and you don't go on any further. So my shepherd there's always more. So the greatest enemy of God, a man of seeing what God's going to do, is being satisfied with having seen what he's did. Amen. With that said, look at your neighbor and say, tonight we come for oil change. And with that said, it's the same oil, but it's going to increase. It's the same oil, but somebody shout, it's going to be fresh. Amen. Psalms 92 and 10, David said, I shall, say it with me, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to freshen up. Praise God. If you'll experience fresh oil, you'll experience a refreshing eating. Come on, somebody. So, so here it is. He said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Then in verses 11 of Psalms 92, he said, My eyes shall see my desire upon those who rise up against me. My ears shall hear my desire upon the wicked that come against me. In other words, he said, when fresh oil descends, uh, when God's oil comes on me fresh, he said, then I get fresh vision. Then I get fresh hearing. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Somebody stay with me. If you're going to see what God God is wanting to do. Say it. If you're going to see what God is wanting to do, if you're going to hear from God tonight, if you're going to be able to have an audience with Him and hear Him, somebody shout, it takes fresh oil to see and to hear. If you don't allow Him to come, come on that way in a fresh sense. And, and the only way you can actually experience Him freshly, and the only way He can touch you with fresh oil is you must exit Whatever experience you've had with him in the past. Amen. You can't patent God's presence and say, well, I've experienced all there is. So if you sit there tonight and all you do is dwell on what last night, what was done here last night, that's an enemy to what God's wanting to do in your life tonight.